Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, chapter four, which is on demand. So first thing for chapter four is knowing about the demand curve. So we have you know, our standard little graph here. On our graph, at the bottom, we can have quantity demanded. And up here, we could have price. So according to the demand curve, when price is high, the quantity demanded is going to be low. As the price of an object, an item, product, goods, service goes down, quantity demanded is going to go up. OK? It's pretty simple. You want a higher demand for a product if price is low, lower demand for a product if price is high. Now, this is opposite of a supply curve, which goes this way. So this would be supply. And this would be demand. As price goes down, demand goes up. But when it comes to supply, as the price goes up, the supply will tend to go up. Manufacturers want to produce more of something that they can sell for a lot of money. So these two things go opposite. And generally, the amount produced is going to be right here at equilibrium. That's when the amount produced and the amount demanded are balanced out. Now, do we need a central government to tell us where this is and how much to produce? No. Instead, what do we have? Who can tell me the answer there? Who, how do producers know how much to produce? They just know. They just know. What's that Adam Smith phrase that says that People just figure this stuff out. <laughs> the, well, the invisible hand, remember? So the invisible hand guides the economy. People don't have to plan it. <clears throat> People just figure it out. So that is uh, the demand curve. The law of demand is simply what this shows, that as price decreases, quantity demanded increases, as uh, price goes up, the quantity demanded goes down. So that's it. That's the law of demand. <clears throat> now, marginal utility. Marginal utility is the enjoyment or satisfaction that you get from having more of something. So if I give you the choice of having one chocolate chip cookie or three chocolate chip cookies, what are you going to choose? One. <laughs> Some of you might say one. Yeah. Most, most people probably have three. Now. Once you've had like 10 chocolate chip cookies, is that 11th one really going to do much more for you? No. And 12th one or 13th, you know? At a certain point, you end up not really getting more enjoyment out of something like that. And that's diminishing marginal utility. So marginal utility is that little bit of satisfaction you get from something. And then each additional one gives you some more satisfaction. But eventually, you get diminishing <laughs> marginal utility, less satisfaction from each one. At that point, you will pay less for them. So if I offered you a chocolate chip cookie for you know, 10 cents, you'd be like, yeah, great, 10 cents is an awesome deal. You know, you'd pay 10 cents for two or three or four of them. But at a certain point, you really wouldn't pay 10 cents for them anymore. You might pay 5 cents or 3 cents or whatever. So as diminishing marginal utility happens, the price people are willing to pay goes down. Another important term to know is income effect. Income effect, pretty straightforward. Does the amount of money people have affect what they're willing to buy? Yes. Yeah, pretty straightforward. That's income effect. The more money people have, the more they'll buy, the more they'll pay for things. As they lose money, as money goes down, income goes down, they have less money to spend. So that's income effect. Substitutes and complements. A substitute is something that can be substituted for one product. So you know, maybe oatmeal cookies can be substituted for chocolate chip cookies if you're a psychopath. Otherwise, oatmeal cookies aren't as good as chocolate chip cookies. But if chocolate chip cookies became super expensive, maybe you'd find some substitute, Oreos or something like that. So a substitute is just something that can be substituted for a product, a good, or a service. If there are more substitutes, price of products tends to go down because People won't buy the product if it's too expensive. They'll just buy the substitute. Now, complements. 
This is compliment with an E, not an I. Compliment with an I is when somebody says something good about you. Compliment is something that partners or pairs well with something. So uh, what would be a compliment for chocolate chip cookies? Milk. Milk, okay. So if somebody's buying chocolate chip cookies, they might also buy milk because it's a compliment. So those things go together. Substitution effect, kind of already talked about this. That is that if there are substitutes available, price is going to tend to decrease. It's sort of like competition. It's competition from the substitutes. It's going to push prices down. Finally, <clears throat> elastic versus inelastic demand. Remember, elastic is a material that stretches. So this is the ability of demand to stretch based on supply, prices, things like that. So if an item it has elastic demand, that means people don't really need it or there's lots of substitutes available or something like that. So the amount of demand for the product is going to change a lot based on, say, price. If something is inelastic, that means it does not stretch. So there's not much stretch in demand. So for example, brain surgery. If you need brain surgery, are you going to say, well, that brain surgery is too expensive. I think I'm just going to let that go. Uh, you're probably going to pay whatever the price is for brain surgery. That's inelastic demand. It's something that you really need. There's no substitute for it. So you're going to get it. Something like uh, chocolate chip cookies, Oreos, things like that. That's very elastic. It's not something you need. There's plenty of substitutes. So price changes will affect sales a lot. If chocolate chip cookies go on sale, buy one, get one free, probably going to get more of them. Okay. If brain surgery goes on sale, buy one, get one free, are you going to be like, I think I'll get two brain surgeries? Like, no, it's not going to happen. So that's elastic versus inelastic. Elastic demand, demand changes a lot based on price. Inelastic, price does not really have a huge effect <coughs> on demand. Uh, some of the things that will affect elasticity, again, like price, um, something that is very expensive will tend, like a very a luxury item or something like that, will tend to have more elastic demands. You know, chocolate chip cookies are a luxury item. You know, they're dessert. You don't have to have them. So elastic versus inelastic. Any questions on any of that? Okay. <laughs>